Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate that opportunity and the opportunity of being here. You know, as somebody who's old, I remember the good old days when we still had vinyl albums. And if I wanted to buy a song, I had to buy the entire stupid record. Today, my kids tell me they have these neat things called iPods, in which if they want a song, all they have to do is download a song. They get to pick exactly what they want to. I'm in one of those situations where I go in a supermarket and I realize I can stand in that aisle and I have literally hundreds of cereals from which to choose. Or if I want to watch a movie, Netflix has thousands of options for me to choose. Or millions of songs I can download. on. There, there are even 34 types of Eggo waffles. Our entire life is run with options and choices by American people. In fact, the only segment of our life in which the concept of options seems to have dissipated is with the government. Because the government is still here to pick winners and losers and decide how I will or will not live my lifestyle. The government is still here to try to go back to those halicon days of the Carter administration where the government told you where to put your thermostat, how fast to drive, and on what days you could or could not get oil for your car, or gasoline for your car. It's a lifestyle that happens to be there. We are dealing with a situation which may be, in essence, one of the biggest lifestyle changers we have ever had in this world with cap and trade. Because we're talking about carbon policy. And as was written in 2007, if you can control carbon, controlling carbon is a bureaucrat's dream. If you can control carbon, you can control life. One of the fears I have right now is that we are moving into an area in which instead of giving Americans options on how to live and how to produce and how to go forward with their lives, we're starting to tell them how to live their lives because the government is the one that's going to be picking winners and losers. We're going to be talking about energy. We're going to be talking about cap and trade, the implications of cap and trade, the tax policies of cap and trade tonight, with the idea that what we should be trying to do as a government is giving people choices and options to let them choose how they live, rather than having the government be the one to pick up who's going to win, who's going to lose, and how we will proceed. I've been joined by several of my friends here tonight. Uh, uh, I appreciate their service to this nation as a member of Congress. I'd like to turn some time over to the gentleman from Georgia who is on the floor right now, even though his committee is still meeting in a markup. But I'd like him to have the opportunity of